Hi, this is Shelly Hoffman with an Ask the Expert here at Pack B TV, and today I'm sitting here with Robert Just. Robert Just uh, works with Main Street Wealth Management, and we're going to talk a little bit about financial portfolios, uh, beneficiaries, things like that. He had given me a list um, because I personally need like an outline of what should I be doing um, to help with my financial. I call it health, mm -hmm. but um, good term. Yep. <laughs> And so he's going to share some of the information with us. So, you know, being that the new year is approaching, mm -hmm. um, is there anything that, like, maybe people should have an annual <clears throat> time to do particularly? Or um... Yes, yeah, there's the two best times to look at your overall financial situation is either the end of the year, because there's a lot of the end of the year stuff that you could be doing, or beginning of the year. Okay. It doesn't have to be done January 1st, but the first month is ideal. Once again, procrastination. We don't want to say, oh, I'll get to it in February. Um, you know, we all, we all have come up with these New Year's resolutions. Go on a okay. diet, lose X number of pounds, and, you know, go to the health club religiously. Are you reading my mind? Well, because I've been there, all right? I only talk on experience. And so we never come up, I never hear these financial resolutions. You know, I'm going to start debt management. I'm going to pay off loans. You know, we don't hear that. And I don't know what the reason is. I'm trying to find out. But I've come up with the list and okay, gave it to you on the, you know, the, the what I think are the most important New Year's resolutions. So, you know, pick a time, you and your spouse, if there is one significant other, sit down mid-January. It's a time where you're starting to gather everything for taxes, so it fits in perfect. Um, and review your family situation first. Has anything changed? Right. Has a minor child reached majority age, turned 19? Um, have you had another child? You know, have you had an elderly parent move in with you? Have you lost a parent? Things of that nature. And then review all of your beneficiary designations on all of your life insurance contracts. And also, the key is your retirement accounts. Okay. Every 401k, every simple IRA, uh, self-employed retirement, every 401k at work has to have a beneficiary designation. Review them. I see constantly, whether it's a divorce or whether it's whatever, Beneficiary designation hasn't been changed in 25 years, yeah. so you really want to change it, um, and and you know keep, just keep tabs on it. It's not something you have to review constantly, once a year, beginning of the year. Just keep in the back of your mind if there is something that happens in my life, I'm going to review it. The other thing you want to do is review your will, or get a will if you don't have yeah. one. Okay, um, you know everyone thinks about a will as being how I pass my assets to whoever I want to pass them to, and it's more than that. You know, if, if, you, uh, if you have charitable intentions when you're gone, you put that in the will, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, most people will leave everything to their spouse. If there is no spouse, then they'll leave everything to their children. If the children are under age 18 and they're minors, that is a big no-no. You don't want to do that. So in your will, you can generate and place trusts that okay. the trusts don't start until you're passing, and then all the assets go into the trust, and then they can be dispersed according to your wishes. Um, you know, $5,000 a year to each of these kids when they turn age, whatever. So it's more than just, you know, who do I want to get all my assets to? It's how you want that to be delivered. So that would be the number one thing is check those two documents. Okay. Okay. Second of all, um, it's a good time to check your, your savings, your portfolios, your investments, your 401k especially. You know, most everyone who's been working has a 401k. Um, you don't have to wait until you get your end of the year statement, but nowadays with online access, you've got that January 1st. Right. Okay. So what you want to do is you want to review it, once again with the beneficiary, but then also more importantly is you want to make sure what I call is weatherproofing your portfolio. Okay. Too many people have, they've invested in the hot investment of the prior 12 months. Okay. Their portfolio isn't bulletproof what I call it. It isn't, it cannot sustain a downturn in the market. Most people try to time the market mm -hmm. and it's been proven that it never can done, be done. So what I say is come up with an appropriate mix that you feel comfortable with. And when I say a mix, I mean, how much do I want in stock? Am I comfortable with the ups and downs of, you know, the, this week the market went down 10% and I lost $5,000. Are you comfortable with that? So come up with the proper mix of stock, uh, safe investments like bonds, cash, CDs, okay. and stick with that. It could be 60% stock, 40% safe investments, and then stick with that throughout the year, throughout the next five years. Okay, and then every January you're just reviewing the allocation. 
do you find that as um, maybe as like I would age or somebody would age, the amount of risks and things that we would want to take would be different? Or is it different per person? Because I have heard you should have like an annual review. Right. And people don't don't take advantage of that, but that would Right. Be it's, that's a great question. And it's not, I've always, you know, the textbook answer is as you get older, right. you want to reduce the risk. I don't really believe in that. I believe your situation, your tolerance dictates how you invest. Okay. Now, obviously, if you have a goal that you've saved money for that you now you're approaching, it's within five years, you want to start ramping down the risk. If you have college education and you're funded, you need college a year from now, you want to get out of the stock market or at least get out of it by the amount that you need that first year. So yes, as you do get older, but it's more dictated on your situation and as you're nearing the life event where you need the money. Okay. Because you really have to look at it as this, is that you retired nowadays, the money has to last another 30 years. Right. You know, the old yeah. scenario was the day you retired, you have to transfer everything to more conservative because five years later you were going to die. Well, now we're seeing people retiring younger, mm -hmm. healthier, or living longer. And living longer, so that money, especially when you deal with uh, two spouses. You know, it's not necessarily the, the passing of the first spouse, it's the passing of the second. So you retire in your early 60s, that money could be around for another 40 years based on the two lives. Right. So I don't really go by the textbook, as you get older, you have to get more conservative. It more dictates on your situation. And, you know, people also don't stay at the same job anymore for 30, 40 years. Exactly. Uh, there's a lot of bouncing around, whether it's the company's choice or people's choice, or we don't stay, you know, in, uh, I love Bevo, I'll probably never leave Bevo, but <laughs> let's just say that I do, and I end up going somewhere south or something. Right. You know, all those things change and dictate, too. So staying in contact with your financial advisor right. and, is and, huge. You know, if you don't have an advisor, this is something you can do. <laughs> You know, you can get on any website where your money is probably a Vanguard, a Schwab, a Fidelity, and they've got different risk tolerance tests you can take, and okay. they've got examples of portfolios for moderate risk. Um, if you do have an advisor, this is something that hopefully the advisor is working with you over the course of the year. Um, but just sit down in January with your significant other, if there is one, and just say, okay, how was the prior year? You know, were we comfortable with this level of risk? One of the problems that people run into is they see that because of changing the jobs, because of whatever, they have a shortfall. They don't think they're going to be able to retire when they want. They don't think they have enough money for children's education. So what they do is they say, well, I'm going to become more risky. I'm going to try to get a better return. Okay. Don't do that. Don't do that. That's why I say bulletproof your portfolio. Come up with that appropriate allocation and stick with it. And then going forward, make sure you monitor it quarterly, twice a year, nothing more than that, okay? And just make sure it's still within those guidelines and then rebalance it. Because what happens is, if you don't look at it, the riskier investments are going to do better than everything else. So over time, those risky investments are going to grow more, so they're going to become a bigger percentage of your portfolio. Okay. So if you don't do anything, your portfolio becomes riskier and riskier as the years go on. So you want to constantly monitor it, once a year, check it. Twice a year, and then rebalance it. Okay. And you have something on here called uh, create a budget for life. Is that kind of like what you're um, talking about when you use that term? Yeah, or? budget is one of those just awful words that no one wants to hear. <laughs> Nobody wants to hear it. You know, it, it, and so when I say create a budget for life, I don't mean create a budget for the next 60 years. Okay. I mean create a budget for your life, and it's different for your goals and dreams. You know, and, and obviously it's, you know, how much money do I take home money do I have? Start with that. What are my spending? And then what am I saving? You know, so the problem with the, the, the budget is everyone thinks it's so tedious. They're trying to get every penny. And don't. Just take it from a 30,000 feet view. It's okay. I have this much money after taxes. This is my spending. Most expenses are going to be fixed cost. Your rent, your mortgage, car loans. It's the entertainment, it's the dining out, things of that nature where we run into the problems. Just come up with a number and then just stick with it. If some night you can't go out because you already used your allocation, you have to stick with it. You know, Warren Buffett said, don't, you know, because we're always, we're always taught, pay yourself first. Right. But people don't really do that. No. You know, they, they do their budget, what's left over, they, they invest. Well, Warren Buffett said, don't save, okay, what's, what's left over after spending. Spend what's left over after saving. Okay, so save first. 
and then what's left over, use that. So once you come up with that budget, okay, um, try to come up with the big key that a lot of people don't do is try to come up with projecting what large expenses you're going to have for the next 12 months. Okay, so it may be, well, I'm ready to buy another car. Um, college education down the road. Your roof is old. Roof is old. Winter, okay, yeah. so try to try to create a fund for those expenses. So when the time comes, you don't have to borrow. You don't have to use your credit card. You know, a roof is your classic. You know, when you buy a house, how old the roof is. You know how long it's going to last. Start saving for that. Um, so I think think the last last article I read about home purchasing, they were saying set aside roughly two to three percent of the house value for maintenance of the house. Oh, that's a pretty good number. Yeah. And, and pretty accurate too, I would think. Yeah, two hundred fifty thousand dollar home, you're up to around five thousand dollars it's gonna cost to maintain that house year in and year out. So try to come up with the expenses that you feel you're gonna have um, and set that money aside as part of your saving. You know, another big thing is create an emergency fund. You know, nothing sexy as a savings account earning nothing, but it's money set aside for new tires on your car. You need six hundred dollars. You don't put it on your credit card. You go to your, your emergency fund. And use that. Little things like this that most people know about, but they don't take the time to to address. Well, and, and having that emergency fund that eliminates debt because we talked a little bit about debt, and there's you know some people say there's good debt, there's bad debt, but um, if I have to put my new snow tires on my car, knowing next year I'm going to need new snow tires, then I wasn't, I didn't prepare myself for that. Right. Right. So I created a debt that I didn't actually need that I could And what also is going to happen is a, pe a lot of people who don't like to use debt or can't use debt, maybe, they, maybe they're maxed out on their cards, they don't want to spend the money on these things, they don't have the cash, what happens is they let things go. You know, the maintenance on the house. Right. You know, cleaning the chimney every year or checking the furnace every year. They don't want to spend the money on that $150 here. So what happens is four or five years down the road, it becomes a $5,000 issue. Correct. And that's why if we set aside the 2 to 3% of the value of the home as the maintenance, you'll have money, cash to do things. So then if the furnace does go and you need three or 4000 then you've got that hopefully that emergency fund to use it for that also. Okay. Now I may throw you off with this question, but if someone does have a decent amount of debt, you know, and and you know they want to eliminate it, they're trying to build up their credit. Do you have any suggestions or anything for them? Because you know this time of year, people do accumulate a lot of debt because they want to, you know, they want to buy, they want to spend for themselves or for family members. And or... the the problem that's a great question, and and I'll answer that by saying there's no easy way. You know, it's a lot easier to get in that situation than it is to get out of, and that's the problem. And most people think it's just as easy to get out as it is to get in that situation. Um, and the problem with debt is most people look at debt as being, they, they borrow what they can, not what they should. All right, that sounds like a trivial thing, but, but no, it's drastic. True. You know, if you look at the, what banks use to, to um approve you for a mortgage, you know, housing expenses, your principal, interest, taxes, insurance, 36, 28% uh, of your gross income. Right. Total debt, car loans, house, everything, 36%. Well, that's a good ballpark to stick with. The problem is we get these credit cards that the maximum, and if you tallied up all the maximums, it would be over that 36%. So people borrow and use the credit cards because they can, not because they should. Right. So, I also I also feel that you have to coordinate the loan length with the asset that you're using the money for. For instance, a car loan. For people to get the car payment to where they can afford it, I see people taking out eight and nine year loans on a car. Meanwhile, they plan on getting rid of it in three years. Right. Well, they're going to still, when they get rid of it in three years, they're going to have this big loan to pay off. They're not going to have a trade-in value. Um, so, long way around your answer is there's nothing easy. You know, there's nothing easy. Maybe you'll look at, if you do get in that situation, look at home equity loans. Yeah, but I'm not a big proponent of using home equity loans to reduce credit card debt. Right. Because you're taking this credit card debt, which is short-term debt, and now you're putting it on to 30-year debt. Um, part of that New Year's resolution would be, okay, I've used these credit cards too much. 
next 12 months I'm going to look at reducing that debt. It's a painful experience paying it, yes. but sometimes I like to see clients go through that because then they're not apt to use it as much next year. Right, because they went through that process. Right. So. Um, is there anything else that you can think of as far as, um, and I say New Year's resolution because you're right, this should be something that annual you can pick any time. Exactly. But something else that you'd like to share with um, our audience as far as um, really like that, that really important thing that if you haven't done it yet you need to or if you haven't looked at it in a while you really need to. Hmm. That's a good question. Um, everything we discussed, um, I think just the big thing I would say is use, there's so many free resources out there, whether it's online, whether it's great programs like this, you know, there is so much out there to help you with it. Contact your advisor. If you don't use an advisor, please contact one. Um, the websites I talked about, if you, if you have accounts at Vanguard, Fidelity, use them. There's a lot of information out there that can help you. Um, another big thing we didn't talk about is we're all allowed once a year to pull a free credit report right. from the three major um, credit reporting agencies. Please do that. If you don't do that, at least check your credit score every month. It's something that all banks do now. Most of your credit cards probably already have that on your statement that you don't even know about. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you don't credit, pull a credit report, at least look at that credit score every month and see, is there a drastic change one month? And then you can pull the credit report. Okay, annualcreditreport.com is a great site where you can get on and pull the free report and look at it, make changes to it if there's erroneous errors. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the biggest thing is just treat your personal finances like you treat the rest of your life. Don't put it in the back seat like most people do. You know, make it a high priority all 12 months, not just in January. Not just in January. Well, thank you for all the information and thanks for your time here today. Thanks. If you have any additional questions, um, certainly reach out to us here at PACB TV. We can pass those questions along. Uh, if there's another topic or an expert that you want us to bring in, let us know that as well. You can find us on um, Facebook. We have a website as, um, as well. And um, everybody have a great day and we'll see you soon.